Hello, my name is Halima Ahmed, and I will be doing my presentation on the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. This is the piece of legislation that appealed to me, that I understood and I did my research on. So in this presentation, I will be touching up a little bit about the act, how it was passed, its purpose, the effect it had on businesses, and also the case that was related with this act. So I will be touching up a little bit about the Great Recession. So the Great Recession is part of all of this because it is the reason for why this act was passed. I will start with the definition of a recession. Recession is the decline in economic growth that lasts like about six or more months in a row. And this ran from 2007 to 2009. So some of the things about recession is that it, this is the drop in real GDP, the drop in income, the downfall of employment, manufacturing, and also retail sales. And some of the things that, the reason why this act, this this recession happened in 2000 was because banks created too much money-making loans, and which caused the loss of customers, and the loss of customers resulted in the reduction in profitability in traditional banking. This made it hard for consumers to trust the banking system, they lost faith in the government, and it was hard, and that's when the recession started completely. Some of the effects that it had was also output went down and also unemployment rate went up. Recession had three basic causes. These three basic causes was housing bubble, household consumption, and also mortgage defaults. So next, I'm going to be talking about the Dodd-Frank Water Street Reform Act. So this act was passed to reform the banking system after this major and economic crisis that caused the country to suffer. So it was passed in response to the recession of the 2000s, and it was signed into bill July 21st, 2010, by President Barack Obama. The goal of this act, the goal of this act, was to regulate consumer credit and mortgage lending. The act also promoted financial stability of the United States, and also it ended bailouts and protected consumers from the unethical financial services practices. So for this slide, I'll be talking about the effect that it had on businesses. In my opinion, this act had a lot of effect on businesses due to the fact that it has a lot to do with the finances of consumers. Some of the businesses that this act affected were financial industries, mortgage companies, and lenders. These were also the businesses that took advantage of consumers at the time of the 2008 financial crisis. So this, in my opinion, this legislation was very necessary and also, it also served its purposes by reforming the banking system. And some of the results of the legislation was that it prevented the United States from experiencing a crisis like the 2008 recession. It also protected consumers against abuses that were related to credit cards, mortgages, and other financial producers. And it also contained three major areas of reform. The three major of area of reform that it um, contained were banking and financial firms reforms, uh, federal reserve reforms, and also consumer protection. Over here, I have a picture of the President Barack Obama, the year 2010, the day that the act was signed into a law. It was this day when he signed it, and I got a picture of it over here. So, the case that I researched was called Digital Reality Trust Inc. versus Somers. In this case, we have Somers. He's a man that was residing in Northern District of California. And Somers is the main person in this case because of the fact that he filed this case, the Dodd-Frank Act whistleblower suit for getting terminated because of the fact that he reported a suspicious act of violation of security laws in his workplace. This case was such a big issue because his employer argued that Somers did not file the case to the SEC. Now the SEC is the US government agency that has a purpose of protecting investors from dangerous or illegal financial practices. That's its goal, that's its mission, and that's what the SEC does. That's why it's important for an employer to report financial practices like this to the SEC. And the employer's argument in this case was that Somers did not file this case, did not report this information to the SEC when he was supposed to. He didn't notify the Securities of Exchange Commission, and that's why it was such a big deal. So whistleblower under the Dodd-Frank Act didn't cover employees who don't report to the SEC, and Somers did not report this to the SEC. 
whistleblowers protection only applied to employees who reported information directly to the SEC. That's what was expected of Summers, which he didn't do, which became a big issue. And this was the ongoing case between Summers and um, his employers, the Digital Reality Trust, basically. This was the case between them. So the court's decision in this case was very simple. So some of the things that this act also touched up on was um, anti-retaliation language. It was also one of the main things that the case was about and it, it covered too, it talked about it because under the act, the act covered, uh, the court held that the act's anti-retaliation language protected employees who report to the SEC and internally. So it covered both of them. Were there, were the employees reported internally to the company or they reported to the SEC, the act, the act covered both of them. So the, the court decision was that a whistleblower is someone who reports information to the commission. That was the definition of whistleblower under the Dodd-Frank Act. It also stated that provision, there was, there was the reason for why Congress in this case had a different definition of whistleblower was because provision in the act, there was provision in the act that didn't require an individual to report the commission. This was what brought differences between what the act covered and what Congress believed. Because of the fact that the provision in the act that didn't require employees to report anything to the commission. However, the court's decision, the final decision was that a whistleblower is somebody who reports who reports the information to the commission and it was expected of Summers to report this information to the SEC. And because he didn't report this information to SEC, it made it hard for the court to take his side or to just side with him, basically in this case. So this is the result of the decision that the court made in this case. So some of the main things that we got out of this case was it was the, the definition of whistleblower in the Dodd Frank Act. It gave a narrow definition of whistleblower, and it made it clear that under the Dodd Frank Act, whistleblower protection limited was only limited to employees who reported information to the SEC. So basically, when the case was going back and forth in the beginning, they couldn't determine whether Summers was right or whether he was wrong. They didn't know which side to take. But after like studying the Dodd Frank Act, studying the actual definition of whistleblower, what it meant in the act, what it protected, what kind of employees it didn't protect, after they studied all of that and the case was ongoing, the case was the court was able to make the decision that Summers was not completely wrong in this case because he reported it internally, because it did say that under the Dodd Frank Act that whistleblower protection applied to any employee who reported information to the SEC and internally. So at the end of the day, the court was able to side with Summers due to the fact that he reported it internally. And under the Dodd-Frank Act, whether it was internally or to the SEC, it was both covered and employees were protected for that. So what I got out of this entire case and legislation was that First of all, I understood, I got a more in-depth understanding of the recession. I heard of the Great Depression and the effect that it had on people and how there was like unemployment rate was down, the decline also in unemployment growth and all that stuff. But it was interesting reading about the Great Recession because the Great Recession was a little bit different since it had to do a lot with deflation and also the effect it had on consumers and the banking system. It was interesting finding out about this. This legislation, I think, served a very great purpose because I feel like I feel like it really protected the banking system, and it was able to get it was able to get consumers to trust the government and the banking system once again. So I feel like it was a great idea that this act was passed in 2010, and I feel like in the upcoming years, four two is going to protect the economy, it's going to protect the banking system, and it's going to prevent any like financial any financial fraud or any financial practices that are unethical from occurring. In my opinion, this legislation did serve its purpose definitely. It protected consumers, like I said, and the banking system, and uh, it served a very good purpose. 